Welcome back, this is the Amber Jack, and today we got Gunslinger, Steam Fortress, Suicidal, and I've got a tale for you. So my mother bought me, I think I talked about it in a recent episode, my mother bought me a, uh, like, tube of salami. Some, some hot Genoa salami. It's, uh, it's reasonably spicy, it goes great on crackers, or in a, uh, I'll put salami in a stir-fry even, okay? I love hot, I love hot Genoa salami. I love shitty. So I love any kind of like hot, sal any any kind of like hot sausage. It's uh, it's great. Um, as long as it isn't uh, you know, a lot of sausage ends up with what is it, like fennel, or fennel seed or something like that. The black licorice taste in junk. Don't like that. You put that in a sausage. Like I think Italian sausage gets it, and a couple of other. I think uh, it's very common to put in in sausage though, and uh, it ruins the sausage completely for me. I just I like, cannot stand the flavor of it. Um, but anyway, I, uh, we have a, like, we have a mandolin, so I could slice the, uh, the salami on, uh, on that. Get, like, some nice, consistent, thin slices. But, like, I'm thinking for the future here, right? I'm thinking, uh, you know, maybe a few years from now, YouTube's taken off. I was able to, to, you know, afford to move out, get my own place. I'm having, you know, a friend over maybe, maybe a little bit more than a friend, you know. And uh, it's like, hey, you know, let's let's have some, some snacks or something. And I, I pull out like, a, what is it, a charcuterie tray or whatever with, uh, with a big tube of salami on it. And some crackers, cheeses, and fruits, veggies, you know, whatever. Um, and then I pull out like a, a fancy, you know, Japanese chef's knife. And I start slicing off really thin, consistent slices. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Okay, it's a lot more impressive to to my friend, maybe more than a friend, to to be slicing it by hand like that rather than using a mandolin. So, I uh, I'm slicing it by hand with uh, with with my with my with my chef's knife. Cause I'm like, you know what? One one day it's gonna pay off. I'll I'll be able to show off with it. You know. But it's hard. Like I, I, I knew it would be hard to like slice super thin because I'm, I'm talking like, you know, basically like transparent thin slices of, of salami here, right? Because I can slice consistently, you know, maybe like three millimeter, even like two millimeter thin slices, you know. But, but I'm talking like paper thin here, you know, much thinner than just like a. You know, a reasonably thick or re a reasonably thin like slice of cucumber. You know, I'm talking like thin. It's hard to do that because there there are so many factors that play into uh, making it happen, right? Because you got uh, you got to have a sharp knife for one. Like your knife has to be stupid sharp. If your knife ain't sharp enough and thin enough, you're just gonna tear it. And, and rip it apart, right? Like, it's got to be very thin, very, very sharp. Um, got that under control. You know, I've got a, uh, a nice, um, you know, Japanese um, carbon steel, you know, fancy out the wazoo here, okay? I got the, I got, I got a good knife. And uh, I got whetstones. I'm pretty good at sharpening my knife. You know, I can, I can, I can get it to, to, to pretty dang sharp. I'm not a you know professional sharpener or anything like that, but I, I can get it to, to pretty dang sharp. Um, sharp enough that that anybody in the world would be able to pick it up and be like, yeah, this is usable. You know, maybe not a sharp enough that anybody in the world could pick it up and be like, you know, this doesn't need sharpening. But I think anybody after I sharpen a knife would be like, yeah, it's fine. You know, like there's there's no problems with it. It could be sharper, but it's fine. It does. It'll do the job, you know. You just you're not gonna be able to show off with it as much, but like it, it's fine. Um, you know, if you wanted to like cut a tomato freestanding or something like that, like it's not quite that sharp. Not quite that sharp, but uh, like it's it's it's. I, well, if I cut off like one side of it so that it has like a, a, a flat surface to stand on, I can do it. But some people can get it to where, like, they, they put it on, like, the round edge of the tomato. Like, just a little cherry tomato or something. And they can just slice through it 
horizontally, like freestanding, just like separating it, you know? Very, uh. Very, very. Sharp. My knives aren't that sharp, but they're sharp enough that uh, that I should be able to cut salami. So that that steps, you know, good. I got that handled, right? The next part that kind of gets in the way of slicing your super thin salami is uh, is uh, you gotta also be able to hold it steady. And when it comes to salami, it's it's a fairly malleable material. Um, so as you're cutting it, it's gonna like warp and bend and and all that because it's malleable you know it's it's gonna do that so you gotta make sure that you're being careful to not put too much pressure on it to like start warping it you don't want to be pulling on it you just want to be like separating it um, then you gotta also make sure that your knife is going literally exactly perfectly straight down towards the cutting board because if you're off by just like a little bit when you're trying to get it that thin, you're not gonna go. You're not gonna make it all the way down. If you're off by a little bit, it, you will notice that it's either thicker at the bottom, um, or you won't cut all the way down to the bottom. It'll like kind of cut out at an angle, and you get this like super thin, like dangly bit at the bottom of the uh, the slice. Then you also have to make sure that the like salami and the knife are perfectly perpendicular or else uh, you're going to end up having like one side be kind of like at an angle, you know? So it's going to kind of like be like a, a wedge shape. And uh, if you get all of that together, perfectly straight, perfectly perpendicular, a nice sharp knife, you're, you know, not... Uh, moving the thing around it's 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 very consistent if you do all of that perfectly right without like the slightest bit of mistake you will slice the perfect slice of salami i've done i've done it once it is ridiculously hard to slice salami like that thin by hand ridiculously hard cuz again there are so many things that can go wrong and uh, if any of those goes wrong by just like like, you know, you're trying to slice it to less than a millimeter thin. If you're off by even just a millimeter, it will be, like, way off. Like, that's that's the tolerance level is, like, nanometers, you know? <laughs> like, really, really hard. Um, it's possible to do. Like, I have done it. And it's possible to be consistent with it. I've seen people do it. It's just, uh, it, it takes a lot of practice. Um, and, uh, because, like, basically what you have to do is you have to, like, line the knife up with the, uh, with the edge of the, the salami, you know, so that it's, it's lined up and has the right, like, distance, and then you just, like, shave off the slightest little slice, and there's your, your slice of salami perfectly thin. It's just that you have to, like, make sure that you're moving exactly perfectly straight down. And uh, it's 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 really 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 challenging. So I've been slaving, eating a lot of salami. Is this the moral of the story? I'm like, yeah. Well, I guess I'll just go have uh, some salami and crackers. <laughs> cut a, cut a few slices and have a couple crackers. And it's been it's been practice. It's not super expensive buying it, you know. So I'll, I'll probably continue buying uh, salami going forward, and and try to cut it myself. One of these days, it could take me if, like a, a few months, you know, to get to the point where I'm slicing it consistently thin. But I will get there, and I will have that boy over for dinner, and I will set up the the charcuterie tray of sausage tubes, and I will slice it so thinly, and he'll be like, "Wow, that's really cool that you did that." And I'll be like, "I know. Here's some salami," and then uh, we'll bang, and uh, and then we'll have some 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 food and and chat about something else it'll not really amount to anything um <laughs> that's that's the goal right i want to be i want to be able to be good at it because it's it's a harmless thing right to me it's like okay you know if the salami isn't like perfectly consistent it's not like it's bad salami it's not like i'm throwing it out no it goes on a cracker and it's still pretty damn tasty you know like 
it's 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 a, it's a cosmetic thing more than anything else. The 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 consistency of the salami, you know, it's not like I'm cutting it like way too thick sometimes, right? It's just sometimes it like tapers off. Sometimes it's a little bit of a wedge. Sometimes it's a little bit, you know, and uh, it's just a little bit off and a little bit of this way, and it's just whatever, you know. You stick it on a. Uh, we got launched. Stick it on a cracker. It's still tasty. Okay. Still tasty. I ain't got a problem with it. Yeah, I'll be good at it one day. There's a lot of things that I'm trying to be better at right now, actually. A lot of things that I'm, I'm putting forth an effort in. YouTube is one of them, obviously. As you can see, I am... Uh, I've got the, the other channel going on as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, how about no bullets? Can I return these bullets? They didn't really taste that good. Um, do I get a refund? Do I have to pay for this still? You got any like discounts? Can I get like a brownie with it for free maybe? You know, just like an ice cream cone or something? Just just some kind of complimentary, you know, apology gift maybe? Anyway. I'm in, uh, you know, got the new YouTube channel going. I've got the Minecraft videos over there. I can show you the Minecraft world actually. I don't know if, uh, if many of you guys have seen it. I've got Minecraft running right now, so I, I can show it to you. I'll show it off. I'll show it off. I'm not getting views, so my uh, my clickbaiting isn't working. So maybe maybe if I show you it, you'll be like, wow, that looks kind of cool. I want to go see that. Perhaps. It could happen. Let's uh, switch over here. This is the storage room. This is the fancy door I made. This is the extra storage, because my storage room isn't big enough. That's a big tunnel. And then, uh, we don't go out there. And this is more tunnel. And then that's the portal room. Don't it look great? Don't it look sick? It looks so sick. Go watch my Minecraft series, alright? Link in the description to the new channel as always. Go check it out if you want to see how it's built and all that. I'm a good YouTuber, please. <laughs> um, I'm working on that. I'm working on uh, chess, although I don't talk about it anymore because uh, of a bad experience with the chess community. I went back to that post that I made, and actually a lot of the comments were deleted. Um, so it seems like maybe it's a little bit more supportive than I expected it to be, but at the same time, I'm just like, yeah, no. You know, I'd, I'd rather just be a part of a community where, like, initially people are pretty friendly, you know, and instead of, like, posthumously. <laughs> um... But, uh, you know, I'm trying to get better at chess. Well, not really trying to get better at chess, but I'm playing it and, and hoping that I, uh, I can improve my ability and stuff. I've, uh, I'm not really looking at openings. I haven't been playing puzzles or anything like that. I've just been playing the game. And uh, I don't really talk about it anymore because I just I don't really want to be a part of the community. I've, uh, I've kind of been avoiding it as a topic because of that. Um, but I am still playing. It's still fun. I still like it. I just, I don't want to... Like, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not interested in being a part of the you know, community again, like it's, it, I don't really care about that, but that's another thing that I'm kind of working on, sort of, and then I'm working on my typing speed, so I type at, uh, like my best is, like when I, when I have like a good race, you know, when I, when I, okay, so th there, there's like two kinds of like best, you know, there's your like, yeah, I had like a good race, didn't make any mistakes, kind of performed at, uh, you know, what I am, what I'm doing my best. And then there's like, dang, that was a good one, you know? Um, so my best, my like consistent best is typically about 150 words per minute. If I have like a good race, I'm not making mistakes, I'm not, like I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, and then if I like, just happen to get a, a race that I'm, I'm like God tier at, um, I, I might get to like about 160. Uh, but that doesn't happen too often. 150 happens fairly regularly. If I'm, uh, you know, it, that's just reliance on me not making mistakes. Um, it's not really a, a good day. It's just a, a normal day without mistakes. You know. Um, I guess we can go and do a quick race. So I've got it open. Um, yeah, this is fine. We, we, we can do a race. I won't be able to talk during it because, uh, like, that's not really a thing 
you have, it's all focus on typing. Not a particularly great race, but again, like if I didn't get uh, too many mistakes, it would have been about 150-ish. Like these ones are not mistakes. For some reason, I can't do passion. I kept doing dispassionate. <laughs> I used to be a uh, consistently like top 10, but like they really, people have really gotten better on this now. So it's been uh, oops, this one. So it's really hard for me to uh, get into the top 10. I'm, I'm fairly consistent getting into the top 20 though. Uh, getting a little bit overwhelmed here. I'm fairly consistent getting to top... Uh, is that a thing? Yeah. Getting to top 20, but I, uh, I used to be top 10 consistently. I like typing. It's uh, it's kind of a passion of mine, I guess. So I'm trying to get better at that. I want to be... Like, I want to get back to the point where I'm back in the top 10, but uh, it's not that I've gotten worse. I'm actually, like, better than I was um, when I was consistently in the top 10. Like, that race there... Like a year ago, that race would have got me into the top like 15 easily. Easily. I would have been top 15 with that race. But uh, now it's like not even top 20. Like not even close to top 20, <laughs> you know? Like it's like the top 20 is like 145 or something like that. Which is definitely lower than I can do. Again, like 150-ish is, is my like what I do if I just don't make mistakes. Um, so I would have... You know, if I didn't make any mistakes in that race, I would have been 150. We can do another one, I guess. One more. I, I might be able to, to get 150 here. This is a bit of a long one, but we'll try it. I'll probably, I'll probably do about 120, 130 in this one, though, because it is too long. And I'll make a bunch of mistakes. And I'm recording, so there's, like, pressure associated with it, but... Yeah, it's so about 120 to 130 is uh, about what I expected. That's like, I think about 120 to 130 is my like normal typing speed. I just make too many mistakes. It's a bit more practice and I'll be able to, to consistently do about uh, 150, I think. Um, I think that's what my typing speed is right now. I just make too many mistakes, so I gotta focus on that. Typing is less about remembering where each character is. And more about building up, like, muscle memory of individual words, right? So, like, I can type Killing Floor. That was, that was Killing Floor 2 typed with just my left hand. And the reason I can type Killing Floor 2 with, with just my right hand, or my, just my left hand so easily, like, God, I'm just doing it bad now. I can't, I can't do it right now. I'm actually, like, way more consistent with it. But the reason I can type Killing Floor 2 so quickly and so consistently, well, apparently not consistently, when I try to show off, it doesn't work. Um, with just my left hand is because when I'm going through the, uh, like, setting up the video, my my right hand is on my mouse at the point where I'm typing in the, the game, because I have to, like, scroll down, remove some tags, add some, like, you know, set the playlist and all that. My right hand is on the mouse, and so I have to type in the Killing Floor 2 <clears throat> with, uh, with just my left hand. And so when I've done it, Hundreds of times, you know, back in the game. I can type it in pretty pretty easily and pretty quickly like that's that's probably faster than a lot of people type with both hands um, Just because I have the muscle memory for those specific words uh, If I try to type anything else with with just my left hand, it's it's not gonna be nearly that quickly. I Think my left hand only typing speed is like maybe 30 to 40 words per minute 
Last I checked. If I do a left hand test, like my left hand test is uh, like 140 or 150 or something like that. Um, using just characters on the left side of the keyboard. Uh, but, you know, not all words use that, so if I also have to reach over to the left side, like I don't have the muscle memory for those words, I have to like think about where each individual character is and then start to type it in and like process it that way. Whereas when you're typing with both hands and you have that muscle memory, or if you normally type with one hand, um, you have the muscle memory for the word and you're able to kind of type it in just naturally. <clears throat> Whereas like when you get a word that you don't have that muscle memory for, you kind of have to like coordinate your hands a little bit more instead of just like relying on that muscle memory. So the practice is, is just do it a lot and build up that muscle memory. Although that's kind of true for a lot of things, right? Um, anyway, typing is another thing that I'm trying to get better at. That's that's always happening for me, though. I always like typing. I, I recently actually changed how I type. I mean, I say recently. It was a few months ago. Um, but I used to type. My right hand would use only my index finger for typing. And... Uh, I would type typically um, like 130 was a high and like 140 maybe 150 was like a holy crap did I just do that um, so I was I was pretty content with it and I was I still considered myself a, a fairly fast typist not like a, a world class typist but like a fairly fast typist um, and then uh, what, what, what was it? I, I decided, like, no, like, I want to actually get better at this. Um, so I started using more fingers on my right hand as well. And, uh, now I actually, like, use, like, this is not, enough. if I type with both of them, two? Like, I'm using my right ring finger to hit the O, whereas before I would have, like, used just my index finger for all of that, which I just did there, which you can see is still pretty quick. Um, but for some words and some letters and some characters, it's just significantly better to have, uh, more fingers to hit it, because you just, you're able to, like, line up your fingers ahead of time to, to hit the letter when you need to, and it, it's a little bit quicker. Um, yeah, it took me, uh, like, probably, a f like, a week or two to get back to 100 words per minute, even, when I, when I made the switch, which I, I consider 100 words per minute to be about the bare minimum for, like, um acceptable typing in my opinion if you're below that it's fine you, you have a different opinion on it i suppose um but for me 100 words per minute is like that's that's where i'm like all right like i'm not wasting too much time um but uh it, it took me a long time to get back up to being even consistently like 120 but now after like many months have passed and i've been consistently doing this kind of typing um the entire time like, my, my average on Type Racer is like 130-ish now, I think. Yeah, 125, which is way higher than it was when I was doing the, the index finger only on the right hand. And my, like, typical, you know, I'm trying to set a good race here, let's do it, is like 150, you know? So it's a huge improvement. Really, really pleased with that. I, I've, I've got a ways to go still, though. Got a ways to go. I want to get to uh, to 200 eventually. I mean, in my opinion, typing is an important skill. Like, being able to type quickly is an important skill. And uh, I think it saves a lot more time. I think I might have talked about this before. But it saves a lot more time than I think a lot of people know or, or, or realize. Because, like, let's just look at... Uh, I mean, let's, let's look at the, the Rain Meter Discord here for a moment. I'm not going to show this to you, but let's search from Yamajack here. Oh, I have streamer mode on. It's not going to let me. From Yamajack, from me, I have 125,520 um, messages in the Rain Meter Discord, and that's just the Rain Meter Discord, just the Rain Meter Discord. That's not counting, you know, every program I've written. That's not counting Reddit. That's not counting the other Discords I'm in. That's not counting YouTube. It's not counting, you know. Um, like forums I'm a part of it's not like it's it's only the rain meter discord here okay just the rain meter discord oh my god it's like just a horde of flesh pounds coming up from behind terrible 
Um, but just the Raymeter Discord, 125,000 messages. Now, if we say that each of those has, I don't know, my, my messages typically have a, a fair few words in them. So if we say each of those has, on average, four words. We'll, we'll, we'll say four words on average, okay? Because some of them are just pictures and you know, some of them are just one word or whatever. You know, so four words per app for... That's that's 600,000 words that I've I've written in just the Rain Meter Discord alone. Right? I might write a bot to count it. <laughs> I might. Just to see how many words total I've, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've written. How many, you know, characters have I written. Um, but uh, that's 600,000 words. Okay, so let's let's do some math here. Okay, 600,000 divided by my typing speed, which is 100. And, well, I guess my typing speed would have been 100. So you'd, you'd have 6,000 um, minutes spent typing in the Raymeter Discord, right? So that would be like, what, 100 hours, right? Um, 100 hours that I've spent typing for the Raymeter Discord messages that I've sent. Only the Raymeter Discord. 100 hours, okay? Um, and that's that's only the rain meter discord again like that's that's not counting like that's that's not even like a Fraction of the total amount of time I've spent typing but but uh, you know a hundred hours is, is what I've spent typing not like reading not like spending time there, but like specifically When I'm actually like pressing keys on a keyboard. I've spent a hundred hours doing that just that in the in the rain meter discord, okay? Now, if I were to be a 50 word per minute typist instead, right, instead of 100, which is when I believe most of my messages would have been sent, and I'd be higher than that, but just, just for simplicity's sake here, if I were to be a 50 word per minute typist, that would be 200 hours that I'd spent. So by being a 100 word per minute typist, I've literally saved myself 100 hours of time. Just in the Rain Muter Discord messages. Just in that. You know, how much can you do with 100 hours of time? And it's not like, you know, always there, but that kind of time, you know, it, it makes a difference in, in whether you're going to be like, I have the time to send a message, you know? It's going to make a difference in, in like, you know, yeah, I've got uh, I've got a moment, I can, I can chat for a bit. It, it makes a difference in, like, your decision making and uh, you know how much you know how long you have to spend and, and how well you're able to you know convey your thoughts like and again that's just the rain meter discord like that's not like my reddit post forum like YouTube like how many other you know messages have I have I written in my lifetime as a as a typist and I've been typing at uh, over 100 words per minute since I was like 12 or something um, so in the last like 13 years, how many words have I written? How many hours have I saved by not being a 50 word per minute typist, by being a 100 word, word per minute typist instead? Probably like a thousand. Like you, you can spend that time to like learn a skill, like to learn a language, to, to like do something productive, you know? So you know your your opinion may differ on on how important being a fast typist is, but but my opinion is that uh, yeah, after 100 words per minute, it, it kind of dies down. Like I, I'm now 150 word per minute, sure we'll say that doesn't save as much time. Like yeah, it saves a few hundred hours, but it's not like a thousand, you know. And it's it's a much bigger time investment to get there so it kind of like counterbalances whereas getting to 100 words per minute you can do that anybody can do that with a few hours of work and the time it like it pays off it pays for itself you know so i view i view typing as a as a particularly valuable skill in the in the digital age you know anyway that's gonna do it for today so thank you for watching remember to like the video if you like it subscribe to see more in the future comment if you have anything to say and i'll see you next time Bye bye